Hi everyone, my name is Florian. I'm one of the Risk Five ambassadors, so super happy to be here. Uh, give me one second. Hey, Risk Five ambassadors, greetings to all of you. Sorry, I didn't need to be. I don't greet my mom. So far, I cannot live from being a Risk Five ambassador, so I also have a day job, but I'm super happy I can work on Risk Five. I'm working for a company who makes Risk Five, and I was thinking today I share with you some ideas where this risk 5 is used in commercial applications. Give you an idea, encourage you to see what the market is and what the real applications are. And then in the end, of course, I show you also some of the products. So there are kind of five big market trends we are seeing in the company I'm working from, for, where risk 5 is driving. There is, of course, the mobile phone. Callista mentioned this, there are big companies making mobile phones and they already switching to Risk V. It's not the main core so far, but there are so many cores in a mobile phone. You have the touch screen controller, you have the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, all of these things. Though this market is huge, a mobile phone has over 50 cores in one package. It's amazing. There are more things coming, IoT microcontroller units. That's a little bit more familiar. That's all these small things where you make some edge AI things, where you accelerate things. That's a big market too, because there are so many new ideas and Risk V is accelerating this with this kind of building blocks. You have so many different ways and so many new ideas how to do things. A big point is AI. Everyone is doing something with Risk V is somehow related to AI. AI is data center, so we are talking not only about small microcontroller units, we are talking about accelerator chips paired and shipped in data centers, deployed in more than thousands of units with thousands of cores inside. So that is another big trend. Then 5G. There are actually a few customers we can talk about, and I also have something on the following slides. 5G is perfectly for risk 5 because there is the challenge that you have changing algorithms but you still need to update them in the field and so on. So having risk 5 you can deploy different things, you can pair it with an accelerator because you have this freedom for a custom extension and everything. The opportunities are huge. And then last but not least, the very big market is also storage. You may have heard of Western Digital, they are very strong in this. They have also a super huge commitment for shipping so many billion cores of Risk V, And there are so many other storage companies outside making SSDs because our whole life is digital. Maybe you take a picture now and post it on Twitter. Cool, but it needs to be stored somewhere. So you have all these memories, you have all these things where you are storing it. That are the five big market trends we are seeing. I would like to jump a little bit into details. The first one is maybe, oh, so there are two buttons and I use it in the wrong way, sorry. So the first one is a microcontroller unit. Actually, Renaissance, they are quite famous in the industrial place and they have made an application specific standard controller. What does it mean? That is a microcontroller unit which they put Risk Five inside and they are shipping it to their end customers, which are then using it and programming with Risk Five. Actually, they revealed some information this year. They have several of these microcontrollers. They have one for uh, motor control, so it's really industrial motor control, PWD and all these things. But they also have something for voice activation. Another thing is 5G. So here, for example, one of the customers who has licensed our course put it in 5G and actually I put a URL inside, I hope you can see it, otherwise the slides will be online I assume. They have actually a great story how they are using Risk Five inside. And in one chip, you see one of these white silver packages, they have two clusters, each 16 cores of Risk Five cores inside, uh, handling some of the package management, so if you're interested, why they did the choice, how they make the architecture decision and so on. They put a cool video on the web page explaining it. That's the URL you see. Welcome to check it out. Another one that is a company from Greater China, HP Micro. They also put a Risk V on the market. It's quite nice because they have some comparisons. So here they compare it to ARM and you actually can see that Risk V is quite strong. 
The interesting thing about this is that they also put the P extension inside. It's a packed synth. It's very powerful. I mean, risk five, we have this kind of vector, but also DSP extension. I'm personally a huge fan of the DSP extension because I think it brings a lot of flexibility to the market, to the industrial players. Talk about GPS analysis, talk about FFT analysis, something like this, cortic functions. The P extension is helping. And it is not yet ratified, but I hope we have it ratified soon, Mark. Mark is working very strong on it. It's not ratified, but it's also in already in a commercial product. And that's only possible because we have this great community, this great support for not only hardware, but as we heard this morning, also from the software. Another one, that is Renesource. Renesource actually has made another microcontroller. And the interesting thing about this is that it's running Linux. So a lot of people asking, is RISC-V available for Linux? And yes, there are some cores. This morning we heard the all winner D1. Uh, many other cores like Sci-5 also had a great core already two years ago or so. But now we also have the big players, I mean, multinational companies, global companies who are making general purpose microprocessor units based on RISC-V where you can run your RISC-V product. I think that is really showing how RISC-V is going global and that RISC-V is here to stay. How can you say that RISC-V is moving big? I have my own theory about it. When you're looking back in the beginning, RISC-V, when it was starting, that was all starting with microcontroller units. The small thing, controlling your SOCs, replace infinity state machines, replacing something where the end user is not touching it. But now we are moving on. We have companies putting it in general purpose controllers where everyone can program and touch it. And that is from my perspective, a clear sign that the software ecosystem, that everything has reached a certain level where we are really big, where we can trust it, where we can ship it and everyone at home can deploy his code. No matter he is sitting in Germany, in America, Bolivia or Africa, you get the core, you can build your code because everything is online. So for me, that's a clear sign that RISC-V is going big and RISC-V will be here to stay. Another big sign is that we're not only getting the industrial adoption, but we are also getting adoption from security environments like automotive. So automotive companies now are looking into RISC-V and we will see adoption for automotive with RISC-V. A lot of the things are safety critical. You drive your car and the brake controller is made by RISC-V. Are you scared? You, of course, not. And other people also don't have to be scared because RISC-V is the perfect choice for it. And it's major enough to be deployed now. So these are the signs we are seeing as a commercial company from the market, which is kind of telling us that RISC-V is the right thing to do. You are, if you're academic, if you're a student, if you're for a commercial company, keep doing RISC-V, stay strong with it, because that will be really where all the future is. Short overview about who is Andes. I'm not sure if you heard about Andes. Uh, we are a pure play CPU IP company. So we focus on making CPU IP. That's where we are best, and that's where we are putting most of our efforts. We are also RISC-V member. We joined when the RISC-V Foundation at that time was founded. Now it's RISC-V International. And we are contributing to this. So there are people like me who get the chance to be an ambassador, who can spend their time on it. But there is also our CTO, for example, like many other CTOs who are working on RISC-V, helping to bring the feedback, what is needed from the industry, what is really a way to go. Uh, Last but not least, we are also working on the software because there is a great software ecosystem and we want to contribute this. It's important to make sure this course from us working and also the ideas coming all back. Some quick overviews. I don't bother you with the numbers too much, but like Callista said, the 10 billion cores shipped from Andes in total. Last year we have shipped 3 billion cores, by the way. We are 17 years in business. Now, some of you maybe run the math. RISC-V is not so old. That is correct. 
Before RISC-V, Andes was making his own RISC architecture. Quite successful in Asia, Taiwan and China, but not really coming to Europe. When RISC-V came out, we found the possibility and we analyzed it. It was quite similar to our own RISC architecture. So it was a domain-specific architecture. It was building blocks, quite flexible. So we decided we go with RISC-V. We saw a big opportunity. And now looking back, that was the right decision. Um, yeah, 250 commercial licenses. That means 250 people who are different companies who are using our course not including academic use, which we are also supporting. Andes itself is a Taiwanese company. On the map, I have made Taiwan red, because maybe you have not heard about Taiwan, but there is a big chance you have heard. Uh, if you have not been to Taiwan, I invite you to come. It's a beautiful island. You can go snorkeling on the beach, and you drive one hour, you're in the mountain. And in between, you visit Andes for a coffee and get the latest updates on Risk v uh, and as itself, we have also offices in the United States. We are represented here in Europe, Israel, Japan, Korea, China, everywhere where the design of microcontroller, of chips, of SLCs are happening. So like Callista said, there is a big job opportunity. You can go to our website, you can apply for a job, you can apply in America, in Europe, just try it. I cannot promise you to get a job, but we are looking for engineers, so please feel free. Callista was absolutely right. There are not enough engineers, and the field is growing like crazy. Uh, some of the added value from Andes, I have to speed up a little bit, sorry. Uh, we, of course, have our own microarchitecture, so the ISA, that is risk five, and then the microarchitectures, that's where we make the difference. We implement super fast branch prediction. We have other things like saving the code size. That's when you go to a commercial product, what you really want to have to save some of the code size, to save SRAM, because that's what is costing the money in the end. There are also other things, for example, like Andes is contributing to the risk five. The DSP extension, for example, in the beginning, that was in our property architecture, in our property risk architecture. And when RISC-V came around, there was no P extension. However, we saw that that is used in the industry, so we decided to take our ISA and kind of open source it and contribute it to the RISC-V community because that is also in our own interest. We know the industry is using it, it's super helpful, and I recommend you to look into it because it has a bunch of benefits. So we kind of contributed this, and now, hopefully having it ratified soon, Mark. Another thing we are offering our commercial customer is a framework how to add custom extensions with RISC-V. That's one of the big benefits. That's also where RISC-V was pushing a big company from Cambridge to add custom extensions recently. We have done this before and we have a framework. So you can do it, you can add it in the code. What we are adding is some kind of EDA tool, which makes this relatively easy to add your own custom instructions. And last but not least, we are also working on the automotive area. So Andes itself, we got certified for the ISO 26262. That's one of the certifications you need if you want to sell to automotive companies like BMW, Toyota, Ford, you name them. And now we are starting to make our course ready for this. We already have a first core, which is meeting ASIL B. That's where we saw the biggest market for it. Uh, we are working on a full roadmap, and our target is to bring Risk V in the automotive world, because from our feeling, the automotive world is ready to get the benefits of Risk V. And if you want to work on this, the market is huge. I invite you to join us. The roadmap from Andes, we will put all the slides up, so I kind of go quickly through it. Uh, on the lower end, on the left side, we have the N22, that is our entry core, a two-stage, followed by the 25 series, a five-stage CPU pipeline going from the left side, which is a microcontroller unit, to the right side, where we are adding a lot of features, like the P-extension, for example, uh, the MMU to have embedded Linux, and last but not least, also cache coherency. 
The 27 series was based on the 25 series, but has improved cache management so for higher throughput. And that's also where we have our first vector processor, which, by the way, we have some technical report from the Lindy group on our table. If you want, grab a copy. They made some analysis about this vector processor. Actually quite interesting. And then last but not least, the 45 series, ranging from a microcontroller unit all the way up to a, a multiprocessor or multi-core system. That, by the way, is also something you can now buy from Renesource, where you can run your Linux on it. Looking a little bit into the cores, so that is the 45 core, for example. It's a eight-stage CPU. So there are late ALUs inside. <laughs> Uh, underlying data access, just some of the features. If you want to have this for a Linux ready system, you may need to have some L2 cache. So we have a solution for this where we have a coherence manager in case you have more than one core. And there is also an L2 cache which you can optional put. Uh, the cache coherence is a messy protocol following and the Linux SMP for this is already ready. It is not yet upstream, so there are still some patches necessary to do this. For some of our customers, small startups, they are also asking for some peripheral. So that is not our main business, but we have something very basic. It's a IO matrix where you can have some quad SPI, real-time clock and so things. Uh, what this thing allows you is to take or license our core, take it with the platform and focus on making your microcontroller or your microprocessor unit with your own IP, with your own idea, without reinventing the wheel. Uh, that, by the way, is also kind of similar to what the Open Hardware Group is offering. Our West Vector Processor, I just go very quickly over this. Uh, we are following most of the standard things. It's a five-stage scalar pipeline with the vector processor unit put to it, like we have also seen yesterday in several presentations, for example. Uh, only one thing I think is a little special. We have this thing which we call streaming port, so the vector processor can get his data over the bus interface, which is shared with the scalar core, but for high throughput applications, you may need to load your data directly or connect the accelerator directly on the vector processor. That is possible with the streaming port where you can put it directly together, closely coupled. The environment for RISC-V is very important and there is a great open source environment out there. However, for some of our customers, they are not so familiar with Linux and everything. In this case, we are offering also an all-in-one environment from Andes. So we have an integrated development environment based on Eclipse with a graphical user interface. We provide all the SDKs uh, pre-packed for our customers. By the way, a lot of this is open source. So we also have a public GitHub repository where you can go and download it. And then we also have a kind of simulator. So if people want to evaluate the performance of our core, they can do this with our IDE. And there are also FPGA boards for testing it. Now the important thing with RISC-V is, and is we are only doing the core, but there is so much more you need to do if you have an SLC, and that's where the ecosystem comes in. And in the ecosystem here, you can see various different things which are important if you want to build a SLC. You have the software, FreeRTOS, Zephyr, Linux, BSP, you name it, you need to have this ready. How can a company, one company achieve it? It's not possible. We all need to work together. We need to leverage each other's work. And that's also why Andes is engaged in the open source community and also helping and giving back as much as we can. So there is security. Nowadays, everything is connected to the internet all the time. So you need to have more security in your course we can't do it alone. That's why we have partners, great companies, also a lot of European companies. If you're looking, for example, Secure IC from French, uh, Verimetrix, Silex Inside, Tiempo Secure. I guess you have heard some of the names already. And it goes on and on. AI, for example, so there is a company called EA6 in Belgium, also quite interesting company. But there is also the open source community like TensorFlow and so on. It all comes kind of together. 
Yeah, that is my wrap up. Uh, I hope it was interesting. I hope I could make it a little bit more interesting by sharing some of the customer stories we are allowed to share. Just to wrap it up, I think Risk Five is here. Risk Five will go big. That's why I'm here. That's why you are hopefully here. Let's push together for Risk Five. And thanks a lot for your time.